Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the updated TX Micro from Beta FPV. On this channel I reviewed the original version which is the 500 milliwatt. However now we have a new 1 watt version that not only has higher power output but it also adds the Express LRS backpack functionality as well. In this video we'll take a bit of a closer look at it, strip it apart, have a look at how well it's made and then at the end I'll give you my thoughts having spent quite a bit of time with this module. Now just to be clear up front, Beta FPV have sent me this for free, however they have not paid for this video, they have not seen it before it's gone live and they've had no influence in its content or my opinion. Anyway let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at this module first of all. Okay, so taking a closer look at this new module from Beta FPV. As I've said, this is the new up to 1 watt power output version, but not only that, this model also has Express LRS backpack functionality as well. Looking at it, as you can see, it is very similar to the original 500 milliwatt model they released, but there are some subtle changes alongside those other big feature improvements. It still has an OLED screen, five-way button, power input, and a USB-C port. However, there are some little changes to the casing alongside the color, including some more space around the USB-C port so it will be compatible with more USB-C cables. These modules now do come with the Beta FPV forked version of Express LRS, but they are now also fully supported in the official Express LRS builds that are available today with that menu functionality as well. One big change with both of these modules with the Express LRS official firmware is that it no longer cuts the RF power output like this one did on the standard firmware and that behavior has been resolved. Moving around to the back, you will also notice one other change and that is that we now have a switch pack here. This is used for selecting what part of the system you want to update the firmware on. For instance, in the current configuration, it's set to normal operation, but you would then change the switch positions to either update the firmware via USB on the Express LRS side or update the firmware on the backpack functionality. Overall, other than the extra power output, the backpack functionality and the subtle change around USB, the modules do look the same. You still have the color changing LED in the middle and we'll take a closer look at that in a minute when we strip the module down. The next thing we're going to do now is take this new module apart and have a closer look at the PCB and how it differs from the original 500 milliwatt one. To take a look inside this module, you need to remove the two screws in the top corner, gently release the front panel and then undo that cable there and that cable there for the front board and the fan and then that releases the inside for you to be able to take a look. It is worth mentioning though once you've undone those cables the antenna one will stay connected because that's connected to the back of the board via UFL and to remove that you need to actually remove the board from the case. Looking inside, the big difference on this module compared to the original one is obviously the big heatsink here in a minute. Because it has that up to one watt of output, they're obviously having to get rid of the additional heat created. So they've mounted a heatsink on this side of the PCB. We still have our fan, which is here to blow air through and move it through the casing. But this heatsink is what is allowing it to actually get rid of the additional heat that's being created. The overall PCB layout in here is different as well because we now have two ESP32's devices. We have our standard ESP32 and we have an 8285 over here for our backpack functionality. You can see these little copper swirls down here and here. These are actually the antennas for the built-in system. So one of them for the Wi-Fi and one of them for backpack, allowing it to communicate with the external world. We also have a couple of buttons which are labelled up on the PCBs and whilst the component layout has moved around you will find everything in you that you expect to find in an Express LRS transmitter. Popping out the PCB is simply done by removing the screw from up here and down here and then gently lifting the board until it releases from the plastic casing. Then if we flip it over you will see that antenna cable coming through this little cutout in the PCB over to this side here. It is a UFL, so you can gently release him, being careful not to damage the connector. And then you can see the back of the board nice and clearly. 
Again, things are similar here to the other modules. So we have our Express LRS module itself located under this can at the back, and that then is cooled through the main PCB with that heatsink on this side. We now have the switch pack down here for selecting the functionality between updating the firmware on backpack or the normal Express LRS. And we also have some additional circuitry down here, which looks like a back for powering the system. Overall, the quality of the PCB looks very good, but what we'll do is hop it under the microscope just to take a bit of a closer look. So just moving around the board under the microscope, we can see we've got our flash down here. This here should be our ESP32, which it is. You can just see the writing as I tilt the board. We've got our Syllab CP2102, and then there's an ESP8285 located over here. And if you now look, you can see these little antenna swirls a little bit more in detail, either side going in to the main chipset. We've got buttons located on the PCB all over the place, but these really aren't used for anything major at the moment. You can see you've got boot, I think that's hex, and I'm not sure what that one is, 828, that's for the 8285. And that just says EN, I think actually not hex. So we've got the buttons in there, but they're not used under normal use. Looking around then up here, we've just got some additional circuitry for the fan control. We've got our XT30, and then you can just see the USB-C, a diode from the USB, and then all of the additional circuitry as we would expect. Flipping the board over to the other side, things look very much as we would expect with that back located down here. It looks like a back because we've got a coil, we've got a diode. That's most likely a voltage regulator there. You've got some additional transistors down the bottom here. And then on the back side of those PCB antennas, there's also a little copper swirl here as well. I have to say the overall build quality of the board looks very, very good. There's nothing here I'm concerned about. The quality of the soldering, the components looks absolutely fine. So just like the other board, the quality of this module does look very decent indeed. I've just quickly removed the heatsink just to show you the setup of that. And what you find underneath is all of these little copper squares that help transfer the heat through from that Express LRS module on this side of the board, through the PCB, and then onto these, which will then go through the heat pad. And then hopefully that's going to be removed via the heatsink with the active cooling on the fan. You can see that there are vias on some of the little copper squares, but not on all of them. And they're located around the tracks that are located on the PCB as well. It's a rather interesting setup because we still have our little LED in the middle, but overall it's doing a good job. I've been testing this module now for actually quite some time and I've got no concerns with the temp buildup on it at all. Just looking at that a little bit closer under the microscope, you can see that you've got the copper squares, some of them with vias, some of them with the vias around it. So you can see they're just located all over the board, just helping to get that heat out from the back of the module through. You'll also notice the legs for the shielding sticking through on the board up here and here. This actually protrudes through and is soldered and you can see a mark of that on the heat sink, but it isn't something that's going to cause any concerns as far as I'm aware because it's all grounded anyway. So it should be absolutely fine. Right now, this module is set up with the firmware shipped by Beta FPV, which is their custom fork of the Express LRS firmware. That you can tell because it has the Express LRS logo with the Express LRS 2.4G writing here. The official firmware looks a little bit different, and we'll take a closer look at that in a second. When I press the button, we can enter the menu, and you here have all of the same settings and options like we had on the other module. So for instance, we have the option to set the packet rate, from 50 to 500 hertz. We have the telemetry ratio. We have the power output. You can select 1 watt, 500, 250, 150, or 25. We've got the RGB settings. However, these are fixed at auto on this module. We've got the bind and update screen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with this custom version of the Beta FPV firmware, it no longer has that issue. Whereas if you press that in flight, it would kill the RF output. It is absolutely fine. And both of these modules have had that issue resolved. What we'll do now is hop over to the official Express LRS build and just show you that because that is what I recommend everyone uses.
So I flashed the module now with the official release of Express LRS firmware. And if I pop him in, you'll see it boot up. And the first thing you'll notice is the boot screen has changed. It just shows the Express LRS logo. And rather than it sitting on that Express LRS logo, it now actually shows the status of the module, showing us the firmware version, the packet rate, the power output, and the telemetry details. Although it looks different, we can still go into the menu. So you can press and hold to enter the menu. That allows us to do things such as packet rate, update the firmware, bind mode, telem radio, TX power, packet rate, and move all the way through. And again, it's just now a different menu layout compared to what we had before, but it has all the same functionality. The only thing to mention is in the official Express LRS firmware, there is no option to control the LED, but on my release firmware for this from Beta FPV, you can't control it anyway. So on this module, you would lose that functionality but on this one, it's exactly the same. One last thing we're going to talk about before we go to my conclusion is power output because this new module is rated at one watt, but I've started doing some testing in the background to try and understand what we're actually getting when a manufacturer says we're getting one watt. For instance, I'm using the Immersion RC power meter to measure the outputs on all of the modules I'm gaining access to, and I'm starting to build up a pool of data that I'm going to be sharing over the next weeks and months as I continue to make videos on this subject. Now, this meter is believed to be fairly accurate, but there are some quirks measuring different systems. And what I will say is this, this meter will allow me to compare the performance between modules, but you shouldn't take the actual output number as a 100% fact. Although I have been doing some testing and I am very confident in the numbers myself, but I will always add in the caveat that the actual physical number may not be 100% accurate, but from a comparison point of view, it should be. Now, the testing mythology that I'm using is slightly different depending on the output. For instance, all outputs below 500 milliwatt are going straight into the meter, and any output above 500 milliwatt are having a 10 dB attenuator added just to not only protect the unit, but it also makes the readings a lot more accurate in both mine and other people's testing. And I want to say a big thank you to Wes, one of the Express LRS devs, who actually helped me with this to get me to a situation where I'm comfortable with the data that I'm getting. Anyway, let's put a chart up on the screen and take a look at what we've got. So as you can see, I've been testing the modules I've got, and that is the Beta FPV 1 watt, the black one. We've tested the Beta FPV 500 milliwatt and the Happy Model 250. There is one other thing I want to mention here is whilst we do have different power setting levels on the modules, that should not be taken that one module is better than another. The basics are the output level on the module below its maximum is a setting within the Express LRS firmware that the dev set. It is not calibrated. So whilst you may see different modules have different outputs at various settings, it isn't a reflection that that module is better or worse. It is simply the case that the calibration for that power level hasn't been performed, and that's why we are seeing the variance. Now, if we look at the numbers, and the big one to look at first of all is the one watt, and at those test numbers, you can see I was getting 1,004 on average, so I am comfortable that this module is producing one watt of output. In my testing, that output does not vary greatly with temperature, and the module is easily able to keep its power level under control. Jumping down to the 500 milliwatt setting, you can see that the Beta FPV 500 milliwatt model is hitting on average 426, which is a little bit below what it should be. And the Beta FPV 1 watt is hitting 410. But again, that 410 isn't a calibrated number and as such shouldn't be taken as the fact the module isn't better or worse. If we look down the rest of the numbers, you can see at 250 milliwatt, things are quite interesting with the happy model unit actually bridging over what it should be up to 294. Again, the power output on that module is simply being set to maximum and you can see it is over delivering. And then if we look at the uh, 
500 milliwatt module at 270 and the one watt module at 210. When we look down the rest of the numbers, it is clear that the calibration on the one watt module isn't quite as good as on the other ones. But again, it's not a reflection that the module is bad. It simply means the numbers that it's been told to output aren't quite reflective of what the unit is doing. What is nice to see is that the one watt module is outputting one watt of power. The 500 milliwatt on its maximum seems to be getting close, although my one not quite there. But what is interesting is that 250 milliwatt happy model module is pushing 294. Okay, so to give you my thoughts on this new Walmart TX from Beta FPV, I have to say, I think this is actually a very, very good module. I've been using this now for quite some time, and really, I see no downsides or problems with it whatsoever. They've taken on a lot of the feedback from the original one, they've improved the output power, they've improved the area around the USB, and we now have that Express LRS backpack functionality as well. Internally, it is well made, the PCB is good, I see no concerns around the quality, and the external housing is nice and solid, and it clicks into the radio very well. Comparing it to other modules, I'll be honest, I don't see a reason not to choose this one over any of the other high power modules. And if you're looking at getting yourself an Express LRS module, this one is well worth a look. It's great that we also now have full support in Express LRS for that LCD screen as well. And I would highly advise using the official build of Express LRS rather than the custom beta version. That way you're getting all of the updates and all of the additional functionality that that brings. Rings. If you're interested in getting one of these, I will put a link to it in the description. It will not be an affiliate link. It will simply be a link to the product on Beta FPV's website. I'd also like to thank Beta FPV for sending this one over. And I'd just like to say, if you are interested in helping us continue to make content like this, please do consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Also, give this video a like if you find it interesting. If you'd like to support us further, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee as well. And it is only by you guys using these am I able to keep making content such as this. Anyway, that's it. One of the best ones I've tried so far. Really do consider checking it out if you're after one. Please stay safe and I will speak to you guys again soon.